Josh Harper is an animal liberationist and anarchist hailing from the Pacific Northwest of the United States. For the last decade, he has fought for animals with a combination of direct action, grassroots organizing, and alternative media production. For his efforts, he has received two grand jury subpoenas, have been under mafia laws, and most recently arrested as a terrorist under the Animal Enterprises Terrorism Act. Josh, it's uh, an honor to have you on the show today. Thank you. Thanks for getting up early. <laughs> we appreciate <laughs> it's, uh, it. It's uh, a little difficult for me. Hopefully, I'll, I'll be articulate. <laughs> When I was first looking for someone to interview on anarchism and animal rights, your name was passed along to me by a friend of mine, Anthony Nicella, and he, he said, you know, Josh would be really good to talk to. And at that time, I didn't really clue in that you were also a member of Shack 7. So I really want to talk about both anarchism as well as your involvement um, in the Shack 7 as well. So maybe we'll start off with, uh, with you as an activist and, uh, and some of the things that you've been dealing with lately. You had said to me that you were glad that, to be on the program because... Canada won't let you into the country. Why won't we let you into our country? Well, um, because allegedly right now I am a terrorist. A few months ago, I was laying in bed at about 6 a.m. when uh, the FBI and Department of Homeland Security showed up at my front doorstep. Um, I dealt with that in the past, and uh, so I opened the door and that they had a warrant. And uh, they informed me that, in fact, they did. <laughs> and uh, from there, I was I was uh, taken down to a federal holding cell and spent all day wondering why I'd been arrested. Um, several hours passed, and uh, I was handed an indictment that was incredibly vague. And uh, the only thing that the indictment mentioned I had done was have speaking dates and write articles for a newsletter. But... Our government apparently now considers that terrorism, and because uh, the United States government considers that terrorism, I basically can't travel anywhere. Hmm. And so if, uh, what, what are the court proceedings like on this, and, and what is the maximum sentence that you could get? I am facing about five years in federal prison uh, because of this indictment. Three other members of the Shock 7 were also given additional charges of um cyber stalking and interstate stalking, um, and they are facing 25 years each. Wow. But in terms of your particular case, you've just said things and wrote things that the U.S. government didn't like. What kind of things have you been writing about and talking about? Well, for, I guess, uh, about the past 14 years now, I've been writing a lot about how um, decline in wilderness tends to parallel a decline in human freedom. And um, I've written also quite a bit about our relationship and our kinship to um, non-human animals. I've always felt that um, defense of uh, the animal nations has to be a militant defense, that the forces that are aligned against animals right now and that are keeping them in a state of oppression aren't going to give up without a fight. And so... I've said on many occasions that I think that laws made by humans to keep animals in slavery are unjust and need to be broken, and um, for that, I'm, I'm facing jail time. Wow. Um, there was an article that was written by um, Stephen Best and, uh, and Richard Kahn about um, the, the trial that um, currently the Shack 7 will be facing, and they have a quote here from Woody Allen that I thought was uh, brilliant. It says here, this trial is a travesty. It's a travesty of a mockery of a sham of a mockery of a travesty of two mockeries of a sham. <laughs> <laughs> it's, pretty, it's pretty great. So... So how do you move forward to this point? You know, you've been speaking about liberation. You think that this is an important, um, and obviously an important movement to be part of, and you, and you want to be part of the militant aspect of it. Um, has it silenced you at all, this, this uh, particular charge now? No, absolutely not. One thing that the government has never been good at is silencing me. <laughs> yeah. um, over the past several years, I've dealt with pretty much everything that that can be thrown at a person uh, short of, um, well, short of much physical violence. Um, I've had my home raided. Uh, one of my, my closest friends for uh, a three-year period was actually, I later found out, a paid FBI informant. Um, the FBI has offered my roommates money to spy on me. 
I've been sued uh, for $13 million under uh, mafia laws, um, uh, given grand jury subpoenas, arrested, jailed, beaten while in jail, and uh, it's never slowed me down. And it's because, and that's because the mission that all of us are working so hard for um, is of such great importance. I mean, when you really try to think of uh, the quantity of lives that are being destroyed by the system of animal slavery. I mean, it, it's just beyond all imagination that we could allow this to continue, that we could put our personal comfort above uh, the liberation of animals. And so all of us uh, in the Shack 7 have continued our activism since the indictments. Every single one of us has continued to go out and to protest and to write and to put up websites and to do all of the things that got us into this mess to begin with because we know that what we're doing is is ultimately saving lives and improving the quality of, of animals' lives. And, and so that's why we're going to continue, um, despite um, the fact that we're facing jail, despite the fact that we could be branded as terrorists, despite the fact that we could spend the next, you know, Five, ten, fifteen years of our lives fighting off civil suits. If this trial uh, finds us guilty, uh, we're all going to push on. I want to know more about um, the Shack campaign and, and HLS. I think a lot of times when people hear about animal testing, you know, vivisection, that it sounds pretty abstract. And so I'm wondering why why did you um, and these other activists choose to concentrate on a HLS? And also, why did you choose the tactics that you have? Why do you believe in militancy in terms of addressing HLS? Well, um, the Shack campaign started back in 1999 in England. Um, Huntington Life Sciences has two research centers um, in England and one here in New Jersey in uh, the United States. Um, Huntington Life Sciences is a contract research organization, which means that it doesn't do any product development of its own, but it will test anything for anybody who, who has enough money. Um, several years ago, because of that, PETA invested in um, sent an undercover videographer into a Huntington Life Sciences Research Center. Um, unbeknownst to them, simultaneously over in England, a news channel was filming a documentary called The Dog's Life, and they had sent uh, their own undercover camera person into a Huntington Life Sciences Research Center over there. What both investigations found was just intense, horrible brutality going on in, inside of the labs, and that's what led me to become involved. Um, I was at the time working on um, a documentary series called uh, Breaking Free Video Magazine, and we had received some of the undercover footage from inside Huntington Life Sciences. I was so distraught trying to edit that footage and having to watch over and over again these lab technicians choke beagle puppies, punch them in the face, throw them against walls. Um, the footage from the United States had lab technicians um, screaming in primates' faces, squirting lotion into their mouths, force-feeding them poisons, and in one case, um, cutting open a monkey who was supposed to be dead, but who was quite clearly still alive. All of the uh, anger and dismay I felt at watching this footage led me to want to become involved. But at that time, there was no movement against Huntington Life Sciences in, in the United States. A few years passed, though, and um, there had been this tremendous string of successes in England, fighting against places such as um, Consort Kennels and the Hillgrove Cat Farm over there. And the people who had worked on those campaigns decided to launch into a campaign against Huntington Life Sciences. Um, I was really inspired by their tenacity and by the fact that they refused to remain timid um, in the face of, of all of this horror that was happening inside of Huntington Life Sciences, they said very directly, we're going to shut this place down. We're going to fight it as hard as we possibly can, and we're going to keep going until it no longer exists. And um, that was something that I could really <laughs> get on board with. Um, I was tired of campaigns in the United States that were 
seeking reform or that we're hoping in some way to dialogue with vivisectors. Um, these people, obviously, I, I don't think that they can be rationed with. I don't think that mere words alone or good ideas are going to stop them. And so when Shaq was taking an approach um, that was harming um, their financial base and that was going